Hi everyone, welcome to this video on how to perform CRUD operations in Syncfusion Blazor review using Entity Framework and Web API. To explain create, read, update and delete operations, I am using an existing Blazor WebAssembly ASP.NET Core hosted application where I have already configured the Syncfusion Blazor review. If you want to know more about the Syncfusion Blazor WebAssembly app and how to add Syncfusion components to it, please watch the video titled Create a Blazor WebAssembly app and add Syncfusion Blazor components, which I have shared in the YouTube card. First, let me explain what I have configured in this application. In the shared project, I have installed Microsoft Entity Framework Core and Microsoft Entity Framework Core SQL Server packages. I added the Northwind database file and created a model class name organization details. Here I have added a property ID which holds the unique ID for each review node, a parent ID which holds the parent node's ID value, hash team which holds the value true if the node has child item, otherwise false, is expanded holds value true if the node is in expanded state and false when the node is in collapsed state. The name property holds the display name on the node. Here it shows the employee name. I created an organization context class inheriting the DB context class so that I can query and save the instances of the organization details. I had created an organization data access layer class to retrieve and save the data. I had added a method to get all employee details to add an employee, update an employee, delete an employee using the ID and as you can notice I had also added a code to remove child employees if they exist. Then I added a method to get the last employee index of the underlying data to generate an ID for a new employee. In the server project I had created an organization controller class and methods to get, post, put and delete operations and call the respective methods from the organization data access layer class. These methods will be accessed by the data manager from the client side. Data manager is a Syncfusion component that acts as a gateway and interacts with both local and remote data sources. This getIndex method returns the last employee ID value from the data source. In the startup.cs class, within the configure services method, I registered my organization DB context with the constant string and added the scoped service for the organization data access layer. As you can see, I had set the JSON serializer options property naming policy to null. This is to avoid the camel casing problem in Blazor while deserializing the data using JSON serializer. In the client project, let me open the index component. Here, I had configured a tree view component with self-referential data. I defined the properties to display the employee name in the tree view nodes and used data manager component to access the data. You can get this sample link from the description of this video to quick start programming. If you want to know how to bind data to the Syncfusion Blazor review component, watch the video titled Binding List Data and Service URLs to the Blazor Review, which I have shared in the YouTube card. I run the project. You can see the tree view with flat data bound to it, displaying employee names based on their team. Now, let me show you how to edit tree view nodes. To perform CRUD operations using a user interface, first let me add a context menu to choose the operation. I add the SF context menu tag and set the T value as context menu item, which is a built in type. I set the target as tree view so that the context menu will show on the tree view component. I add the context menu items tag and within it, I add the context menu item tag. And set the text as edit. I add another context menu item for add and another for remove. To get the selected context menu item, I need to use the item selected event. So I add the context menu events tag and set the t value as context menu item. I add the item selected event and set the value context menu item selected. Within the code directive, I implement the callback method public void context menu item selector and receive the parameter as menu event args of type context menu item. Using a switch statement, I check if the args.item.text 
contains the value edit and then I call the rename node method and implement async void rename node method. Within it, I need to call the previews begin edit method. So I add a ref attribute and set the reference name as tree. In the code directive, I create a variable of SF tree view of organization details and name it as tree. In the rename node method, I call the tree view objects begin edit method by passing the ID 1 as a string value. I add hash here. Sorry, I missed it before. Now, let me run the application. I right click to show the context menu. I select the edit option. Notice the first node in the edit mode. I change the value and you can see the value updated in the underlying database. Next, let me show you how to edit a node by selecting it. To get the selected node from the tree view, in the SF tree view tag, I add the tree view events tag and set the t value as organization details. I add the node clicked event and set the tree view node clicked value. In the code directive, I implement this event callback method public async void tree view node clicked and receive the parameter of the node click event talks type. Let me create a member variable of type string to store the selected ID in the preview node clicked method. I add code to get the selected ID. Here I have used the arguments event property to get the mouse right click event and assign the selected ID variable with the node ID using preview nodes get attribute method. In the rename node method, I remove the value 1 and pass the value selected ID. I run the application. I select the value Johnson and right click. When I click edit option, you can see the node Johnson in the edit mode. I edit the value and it is saved in the database. Now let me show you how to add a new node to the tree view. To add a child node for the selected tree view node in the context menu item selected callback event, I add a new case for add and call the method add node. I implement this method void add node and within it I need to create a new tree node data and add it to the tree view component. To do so, I create a variable of type list of object tree data and initialize it. In the tree data object, I add a new item with the id value 14 and name it new entry and the parent id as selected id so that this newly added item will be added as a child to the selected node. Using the tree object, I call the add nodes method and pass the tree data selected id passing the index value as null since I have added it in the created data item. Finally, I pass the parameter as false so that it will add the node as a child item for the passed parent id. I run the application. I right click on the first parent item and choose the option add. You can see the node new entry added to the tree view. Now I change the value to Sam. Next, let me show you how to retrieve the last tree view items index and add new items with new node ID at runtime. I need to use the HTTP clients get JSON async extended method and call the server side method to get the index at initial load. To access the getjson async extension method, I inject the HTTP client with an alias HTTP. In the code directive, I override the oninitialized async method and within, I create an integer variable count. Using the HTTP object, I call the getjson async method and pass the request URI. Remember that I have already implemented this method in my controller to return the last tree view nodes ID. I create a local integer variable index to store the index value for the new tree view node items ID. In the oninitialized async method, I set the value with count plus 1 so that the new item will get the succeeding ID. In the add node method, I block the hardcoded value 14 and assign the variable index. I set the index value by incrementing it with value 1 so that further new items will get the next numbers for id. Let me place a breakpoint in the add node method to see the index that is the new nodes id value. I run the application. 
I right click and select the add option. You can see the breakpoint hits. The value in the index is 15, which is the succeeding value of the last Ruby node ID that is 14. I run the application. You can see the node new entry added to the tree view. Now I change the value. I again add a new node. The breakpoint hits and you can see the value 16 now. Thus you can get the next node IDs from the server. Next, let me show you how to delete a node when choosing the option remove from the context menu. In the context menu item selected callback method, I add a new case for remove and call the method remove node. I implement the void remove node method and within it I create a variable of type string array remove node and assign a new string array with selected id as value. I call the tree objects remove nodes method by passing the remove node variable. I run the application. I select a node and right click to choose the remove option. As you can see, the node has removed from the tree view component. Finally, let me summarize the main points. I explained the steps to perform, read, edit, add, and remove operations to the Syncfusion Blazor of tree view. You can download this working example from the GitHub link in the video description below. You can also check if you are eligible for our community license, which gives you a free license key to use our Blazor products. If you found this video useful, click the like button and subscribe to our channel to get notifications about new videos. Thanks for watching.